We'll get started in just a minute after everyone has had a moment to sign on. All right, well, welcome everyone. This is Erin Donovan, Interim Director for the AIA New Orleans. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on uh, developing an intentional business uh, development strategy for the reopening. This is uh, the fourth in our series of webinars that we're holding about issues that have come up in the AEC community around uh, the COVID crisis. So today's topic um, will be presented by Rachel Lede. A note up top about the format for this webinar. Um, everyone will be muted, but you will be able to submit any questions that you have through the Q&A function, and those will be addressed at the end of the presentation um, in the last couple of minutes of our hour together. We'll be making a recording of this webinar, and that will be available after we are finished. And unfortunately, we are a small team, so we can't really troubleshoot any IT issues for you. But if you are running into trouble with Zoom, uh, you can um, just use the call-in number that went out to your email in order to participate. If you need your um, learning unit credits and you are calling in, please make sure to reach out to lauren at aineworleans.org with your name and AIA number after the webinar and she will make sure that you get credit for this session. Our agenda for today, uh, we are going to hear from Rachel Harris Lede on developing an intentional business development strategy for the reopening. We'll have a Q&A towards the end, and then we will finish up with a couple upcoming AI New Orleans events. Rachel Harris Lede is a marketing strategist and business developer with a specialization in strategic planning, brand management, business development, and technical writing. Her 14-year career includes marketing and business development experience in professional services, product management, retail, technical services, small businesses, and nonprofits. She's led the founding and development of several nonprofits and has served on board and volunteer positions in event management, branding, logistics, and operations. Rachel is very involved in the economic development community in the greater New Orleans region and is passionate about community development, entrepreneurship, and small business opportunity. And we'll hand it over to you, Rachel. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to turn all of my recording um, devices on. Good morning, or uh, I guess we just hit afternoon, everybody. Um, thank y'all for jumping on today. I do have a PowerPoint that I can send out after the call. It's uh, pretty short and informal, but just has some overall thoughts about planning for this next, you know, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, um, as we sort of maybe unroll ourselves back into a more normal life. Um, I am going to share my screen now and um, see if we can get you guys up on the PowerPoint. So I think we're good to go. Um, when AIA asked me about some topics surrounding marketing and BD uh, kind of in light of the COVID-19 crisis, um, it just really came to mind for me that what I'm talking about with my clients is, okay, we've kind of been in this survival mode, but what do we do next? How do we think about the next thing? Uh, a lot of what I do with people is talk about planning. And even if those plans change and adjust and flex and go inside out and upside down, we still have a plan that we've, we've started and we have something to edit as we go. Um, so um, I had a great introduction already. Um, I put this together just so y'all could kind of see, you know, who I am quickly. I have about 14 to 15 years um, in marketing and business development. 
mostly in the AEC industry, having worked um, actually in-house at engineering firms, architecture and construction, and doing both BD and marketing. A lot of what I do for clients currently is fold those two efforts um, at their firms together. And so we develop a lot of marketing tools that support business development efforts and we set strategies so that we know that we're tracking and we're being held accountable and that we know where we're at least aiming for um, as we progress through the year. So um, I'm just a really big believer that marketing and business development folds together, uh, especially for our industry where we have a lot of technical people doing the outreach and the BD, there's always a close collaboration and certainly the best situations for connecting with our clients come from that collaboration, a lot of tracking, um, a lot of targeting and follow-up, which is seemingly simple and in practice sometimes hard to keep up with. So um, just a quick, overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to start with a sort of a, a quick assessment of the communications um, that has taken place during social distancing, go into flexible planning, then future planning as we get through the summer and the fall. Um, a quick list of some um, topics and lessons learned, and then I will share with you a sort of off the cuff rudimentary survey that I did with some local firms earlier this week that I uh, have a disclaimer. There's, there's not some massive data mining from it, but it is sort of a gut check that I'd like to share with you guys. And then we will go into Q and A. So that's where we're gonna um, walk through the agenda for today. So if we're starting out, I think it's important, um, and because I don't know how you guys have been working over the last, um, you know, I guess we're right at six weeks or so since the March 15th, 16th um, social distancing mandate. I really want to, if I was working with you in your office, we would do a little assessment on what communications you have shared already with your clients and your contacts. So when I say contacts, um, to me, that means anything that's like periphery. If you have subconsultants, if you're um, an architecture firm and you have um, ongoing projects in CA and the contractors you're normally seeing um, at weekly OAC meetings or something, um, whoever their subs are, whoever you'd be meeting with, anybody that's an advocate or an information source for your firm. So sometimes those people work in agencies or they might be a ge geotechnical engineer who does a lot of uh, work and referrals to your firm, anyone who you're sort of using as an advocate or influencer for your firm, what have you shared with them about how your office is functioning right now? Um, have you sent emails? Do you have a newsletter? Have you shared on social? I think sometimes, even if it seems like nominal information, it's still good for people to get something that says, hey, this is how we're working right now. We're still keeping you front of mind. Um, and so even if that's just a list that you're jotting out, who have you contacted? Has it been broad-based? Has it been individual? Are your PMs reaching out? Um, you know, keeping up with just the flow of information. I would even venture to say a weekly, hey, this is how we're doing. Our, our staff is, meeting weekly to discuss your projects, whatever it is, just so you, they know that you're remembering them and that you're keeping them in the loop on how you're communicating internally and with them. Um, so some of these communication points can be um, current status checks on projects that you have in progress separate from formalized documents. I'm talking about more like an email newsletter format, more conversational um, than just pumping them a report. Um, as I said, you know, an update on how your staff is working. I've seen some kind of uh, cute things that some of the firms have done where they take a screenshot of everyone doing their Zoom meetings and they're just kind of saying, hey, look, we're still checking in. We're still functioning. We're still moving forward as a team. 
um, even that is sort of a nice security of, okay, I know these people are still working together. Um, any positive stories that have come out of your firm, um, especially if you have people that are doing something unique like sewing masks or um, delivering food to healthcare workers or anything where in a normal situation in life you might be sharing information on social media about community assistance and involvement pivot that and talk about how you might be you know just dealing with things as individuals or really small groups or think about doing something like that that you could share um, that your firm can say that you're being part of something um, and then of course if there's any certain measures that you want to talk about with protecting your staff I know there's been talk in the construction industry about how the hand washing stations are being set up and um, some of those things that are triggering maybe some different safety regulations and steps to being healthy um, or anything that you've done that ha it has been a slight change in how you're functioning. Um, if you have some guideline at your office that you have three people working per day and there's like a rotating shift. I mean, some people might find that interesting that they could use at their own offices. And so certainly that's something that you could share as well. Um, so I kind of went through uh, the Newsweek article, I think it was from a day or two ago, and just jotted out the three phases that everyone is talking about because I really wanted to look at your clients in them, not so much your firms, but the clients that you have, because as a, as a marketer, I would want to know if I worked in your firm, who is popping at different points. Um, and this is something I think would be really good to sit and maybe document out. So if you are working heavily in schools, obviously they are closed right now, and that might have certain innuendos for you. If you're working in hospitality or sports and there's higher volumes of people, um, you're looking at more of this like phase three rollout. Um, I think it's sort of weird slash interesting that they're sort of breaking bars apart um, in, in a lot of the planning. I know that none of us can say right now today which date each of these things is happening, but you can sit with your principles and say these are the people that we are working with or working for in each one of these areas and we need to think about how this is going to affect them um, and there could be positives if you're doing construction at one of these sites i mean i've heard that some of the hotels that were doing smaller scale projects kind of took this as an opportunity to jump in and do renovations because no one's there that's a positive i've also heard of some firms having more healthcare work because they're doing some things that are reactive to um, coronavirus. So it's for me, it's all about looking at kind of the map and jotting notes on how that will affect different things in your world, um, which really is going to lead to the client survey that we'll talk about in a minute. So here's just a quick snapshot of the most recent um, Newsweek article that talks about the three phases of opening and sort of what they're expecting. Of course, each state and probably local government is going to handle it slightly differently. Um, so flexible planning. If we were doing regular strategic planning for your firm, it would still be flexible. Um, with this sort of keeping agility in mind, I think it's more important to have benchmarks set and know that those things may slide, obviously. Um, I do think it's a great thing to, in addition to push information out to your clients and contacts, is to actually survey them and have it written down so that you have something that's a little bit more formalized. Um, and I have an example document for you guys to look at in a second. And then also just starting to talk internally about what your potential start dates and meeting options could be with different groups of people. Um, I know I was just talking to the ladies at AIA about what they're even planning to do. And of course, it's very up in the air. I do think it's a good idea to say 
there are groups of people who are not going to want to meet in person or maybe with certain stipulations, but we need to know kind of what those are and what the specifics are for certain groups of people, like people who work in healthcare, people who um, are working in construction, people who are working in school systems, uh, people who are elderly, that there's gonna be a whole lot of um, different approaches, I believe, on how we can interact with people. And I think it's good to start outlining who we can even communicate with in what ways first. So there's also a strategic outreach plan document that I've included that you can kind of just start to paint pictures even if there's gaps. Um, also, I would say hugely important if you're not looking at your sales funnel from the beginning of the year now and in really 30, 60 days and then 90 days, you really need to be looking at um, what was your firm looking at originally? What are the probabilities of those things still happening? Are you talking to those people about what their funding sources, viability, constructability, site constraints, um, funding constraints? Do you even know what their questions are? Because I think sometimes, you know, it's one thing to not know the answer, but if you don't even know what your client's questions are, then you're not really able to feel out um, what's holding them up. I think that's a, a good bit of information if you're prospecting anyone. So um, these two documents I have saved on my website, my blog section, so that uh, you can grab these Excel sheets if you'd like to. They're nothing um, super complicated, but I just like to have something documented so that we all know what we're looking at. So if you were gonna use sort of an outreach plan, who are your clients? What key contacts are you talking with there? Um, are they a current client, a prospect, or an advocate? As I mentioned, someone who's like a connector role, um, who's not going to be the one to dole out the project to your firm, but who is an influencer, an information gatherer, a connector, who has um, maybe information or power to get, guide you in a certain direction. Um, what specific industry or target market are they in? And then their preferred method of communication. So if this was me, I would be making phone calls to these people or emailing them and saying, you know, within 15 days, um, do you still prefer that I call you on your cell phone? Do you still prefer that we do a web call? Do you prefer that we do have an in-person meeting when we're allowed? Um, those types of things, kind of like feeling the temperature out of what their comfort level is. Um, I always like to keep last state of communication because as you develop a report and share it in our office, I think it's important for people to know how fresh the information is. I would like to start assuming that in the next week or two weeks, I actually just got a text from somebody asking me about when we could meet in the next few weeks. So I think people are starting to think about that. And I almost think we're about a week or two away from putting dates on the calendar, even if those meetings have to go to a call versus in person versus not. Um, I know I do a lot of lunch meeting, coffee meetings and things like that. And so those question marks, I'm not sure how the actual meeting location will be, but I do think that we can say, hey, um, we're going to talk by this date because we'll know something by then and then at least know what you're comfortable with. So this sheet will change. Um, I, for me, I'd like to know who's comfortable with what. And I do have some people who are okay meeting one-on-one -on -one right now. So it's totally personal. I think we all need to expect that people need space um, to figure out what they're, you know, most comfortable with based on their health and their involvement in their community and their connectivity. Um, you know, and something I said earlier too, you know, based on where you're situated in greater New Orleans, I believe that there's a little bit of difference. So I'm on the North Shore, even though I work heavily in the CBD and in Metairie usually. Um, and I do think the vibe is a little different. So you know, these are all questions I just want to 
prompt you to ask people because I think it's very individual. I also think based on the ages of the people in your family and how you are interacting in a community and how safe you feel kind of really affects how much people are willing to look at gathering in the future. The second document, super quick. This is like, I, I personally just like talking to people myself. So I would get on the phone with people um, and talk about what they are doing in their world. This is not about you, this is about them. So, hey, client A, you know, jot notes to yourself, what industry are they in? Um, you know this, this is just so when you're sharing information amongst your staff, everyone kind of has a grip on what they're looking at. Um, what specific needs and guidelines do you have for your industry? So if you're a restaurant, what does that mean for you? What are you being told about health, safety, kitchen, sanitation? I don't know, whatever things might go with those, um, with those folks and what they're thinking about. Um, and then how are they working? So I have a lot of friends and clients who are in the restaurant industry and I ask them weekly, like, what is your revenue? Like, how many people do you have there? Are you, are you making money doing takeout? How much takeout do you have? Cause I want to know, like, I need to know what, what they're dealing with. Um, what are your hours? Are you just doing lunch? Are you doing full schedules? You know, what's the deal? So kind of asking them how they're working and flexing right now can maybe give you some ideas. Um, and then also, of course, I always like to ask people about their challenges. So are you having financial challenges? Are you having issues making decisions about things? Are you having production issues or staffing issues? I think the more we can understand our clients' pain points in areas that are not connected to our service to them is the more that we can um, provide sort of a servant-hearted guidance to them. And then maybe, who knows, maybe we can help them with ideas and planning and connection in other ways. Um, anticipated future needs, back to the three phases. Hey, client, as you see these things go through, how does that affect you? Um, what does that mean for how many seats you can even fill in your restaurant? What does that mean for your viability financially? Um, do you have, you know, are you getting SBA loans that are going to help you? All those things, it shows that you care. It shows that you want to be helpful. And it also gives you some mechanisms to know how and where you can help. The, um, you know, just simple things like, are, is there PPE required for your guests or your employees based on what you're doing that's outside of the normal PPE requirements? Um, do you have meeting requirements for your vendors? Are you not allowing people to come in if you're a nursing home for six months? I don't know. Maybe you're not. Um, maybe if you're, you know, a memory care facility, I need to assume that I'm going to be Zooming with you for the next year. I have no idea. Ask that question. Any immediate needs where you can provide help, um, you know, especially because architects and engineers and contractors have a lot of skills on the side of their service um, that they normally charge for. There may be some really interesting things that you and your staff could do that could help in a different way, in an artistic way, in a um, complementary way that could be really interesting for your um, clients. You know, if they, if you have a bunch of artists who, you know, happen to be architects at your firm, you know, could y'all doodle out 55 coloring sheets for the kids of the employees at your client's office? I don't know, but you could certainly do some interesting things um, based on the skill sets that you guys already have. I have about 20 ideas, so y'all should call me later. We'll talk about them, but some things that sort of take the personality and flair of your office staff um, that you do just by the nature of being uh, inventors and um, you know, artists, and I know you guys make a lot of things. That I've had engineers I worked with who did metalworking and all kinds of things on the side for fun. So you never know where you can plug it and help. Um, any additional comments? So super easy Excel sheet. Please feel free to adjust as you'd like. These are all on my website if you want to go grab them. I'm um, just going to do a time check. Okay, we're good. The sales funnel I referred to earlier. This is sort of how I like to break down 
BD um, sales opportunities. This is not the hard, fast rule. This is kind of what integrates well with most CRMs. And so I like to kind of look at this um, annually and then certainly quarterly. And then if I was working with your firm, we would look at it bi-weekly and update it as we go. So sort of at the top of this funnel, any project leads that you have even looked at with a 10 foot pole is, you know, could potentially happen in 2020 or 2021. Um, anything that you have in that section, this can all be done in Excel. If you have Potential or Dell Tech or another CRM, this will dashboard it for you if your stages are set properly. I think it's good to know because if you have this list from January, and then you did your client surveys, you'd be able to sit here today and say, which things do I need to click up or down in the sales funnel so that we know what we're dealing with. Um, project um, opportunities, that's where something has a dollar value assigned to it. It's not just like, oh, we heard LSU might do a new art complex. Okay, that's not an opportunity yet. An opportunity is something where you can submit a proposal. There's an RFP coming out. It's quantifiable. It can be awarded. That doesn't mean it's going to be awarded this second, but it can be awarded and become something that you can build to or build to. Um, and so that's kind of a 20 to 50% range. Here again, those percentages are um, up to you guys and how you want to sort of chug that train down the line. I opened it up for 2020 to 2021. Normally I probably would look at a close rate within the year, but because we've had this two, three month pause, I think it's a little um, short-sighted to just cut it off at 2020 right now. Um, and then it goes into potentials and probables. For me, that means it's potentially gonna close. We're at that 60 to 80% probability that it will happen. Um, this is typically when the client is like, talking to you about moving forwards they've either verbally awarded it or they said you're our guy Looks like we might have lost Rachel momentarily, so we'll reach out to her. So if everyone could bear with us for just one minute here, we'll try to get Rachel back online with us. I think I may have lost the call there for a second. Are we good now, Lauren? Yeah, I see it, and 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 I hear you. So yeah, uh, awesome. Sorry about that, y'all. Off with the sales funnel. Okay, I didn't go any farther than that. Sorry, y'all. I think I just um, had a weird like Wi-Fi thing happening. You know, joys of working from home. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. Sorry about that. Let me Welcome go back, back to share screen. Awesome. Okay, here I am again. I'm sharing. Um, okay, so we were in sales funnel and I was basically just saying to quantify out which projects are at each level, even if you're guessing at the numbers. So let's say you have five projects that are leads and they're all $2 million construction value and that's uh, you know, 10 to 20% probability of closing, you can actually factor out and get a number of what value that is. And then you can do the same for opportunities. Fact, it's, it's factored cost, but 
factoring out the probability and the same thing for potential and probable. And what, what this does is just give you a picture of what could happen. And then quarter over quarter, you can start to look at what actually closed versus what was in your funnel. And over time, you should be able to say 20%, 30%, whatever we anticipated for our firm actually closed just kind of gives you some of that forecasting. The whole point of me talking about sales funnel right now is if you had an idea at the beginning of the year, you should revisit it now and in the coming months. And this survey stuff should certainly help you get there. Um, not too much more, I promise. So for future planning and setting a rhythm for business development outreach, thinking about who in your firm, um, the seller doers, or if you have a BD person or the principals, um, who is going to be doing the outreach and what your rhythm will be. So setting benchmarks really. We'd like to have four meetings per week. They can be in office or virtual. Um, you can start asking for meetings earlier, early, like, you know, next week time frame, even if those dates have to slide. I know for me, if something's on my calendar, it's much more front of mind to say, oh, I have to move this meeting. We have to move this meeting. You have to move this meeting as if there's just nothing there. Then you sort of keep rolling through the days. And I mean, how many of you are getting to Friday and you haven't called the six people you need to call? That's what happens. If it's on the calendar, we at least know we could move it. So I, I'm going to start putting these on the calendar, even if they slide. When you're looking at sort of your summer planning, um, you know, throw a date on the calendar for your staff to look at sort of where you are with your strategic plan or if you need to kind of start one. There's going to be major areas of adjustment and we know that. So what's happening with your key clients and your target markets? You know, are things skyrocketing because of COVID-19? Are you working for the oil industry and that's taking a back seat right now? I mean is manufacturing off the charts because everyone's building healthcare equipment and supplies. How is that changing for you? Um, what are opportunities for sponsorship that your firm can do to be reactive to this um, or to help plan for something new? You know, there's like all this talk we were talking this morning and earlier before the call about all the musicians and how, you know, jazz fest or lack thereof has affected people. Is there something that you can do to be supportive to those people and artists. Um, any opportunities to network? I think that's going to be shaky for right now as we figure things out. Um, but certainly you can be thinking about ways you want to plug in in the next fall, winter time when we're all, all able to do that. Um, and just, you know, professional development. If you have a bunch of people who are working from home right now or who are going to be um, working in a different environment? Are there areas of education like webinars or other certifications or challenge some of your unlicensed folks to start the process? I mean, there's some educational goals that um, could be taken advantage of during this time. Of course, I highly suggest a fall review and a year-end review. And of course, I love strategic planning, so I'd be um, you know, remiss if I did not talk about planning for the following year. Of course, flexibility and agility always in mind as we do planning. The last big chunk is just sitting at a round table or on a web call and talking about the things that you have learned. I feel like after Katrina, this was really um, done well and people still talk about it obviously, but what did your firm do with communication challenges and project challenges and technological challenges? Did you have to put your server online or go to a cloud? Did you have to start using Dropbox more? I don't know. Um, are there areas of improvement? I mean, if something, God forbid, happens again, or we're working from home, or let's say we culturally move to a more flexible model because that's what the world goes to as a lessons learned from this. What does that mean for your team and how you work with people? So outlining all of that. Um, certainly how this has affected your company culture. What were some defining moments? What can be some defining moments? How, um, how did you make people feel better about what they were dealing with um, while they were home and the stresses of what's happening and what can you be doing? Have you thought about how that's affecting your culture? I promise you it's affecting your culture. 
I saw something printed a week or two ago that said how companies treat and handle their employees during this time will affect their uh, branding for 10 years because how, how people are working through this um, and the internal effects will show in your marketing, branding, and outreach because it's all about how people feel and your employees in this and coming out of this are going to feel a certain way, positive and negative. And there are certainly things you can do to help shape that and better that. Um, any areas of advancement or solution that you have realized or noticed? Um, a, it's great to know and write down. B, some really great content that you can develop for your firm about being flexible and being technologically savvy and um, being an advocate for people in your community. That could be some really great marketing content for later um, or for now. So put all that on paper. Um, any other topics like how you handle telecommuting, maybe some new team dynamics, um, new tools that you're using. Are you using Trello or something to communicate or Slack? Are you, are you doing something different with your document sharing? I mean, I've got to imagine that there's been a lot of flexing during this time, and I think it would be really great to write it all down. Um, okay, so last sort of section. Um, doing good on time. I asked about 30, 40 of my own contacts in New Orleans in AEC on Monday to fill out a very informal survey for me because I just wanted to know what the heck people were thinking before I talked to you guys. So um, as I said earlier, this is not formalized. Do not print this. Or send this to the mass media and tell them that I conducted any type of scientific survey. I did want to get a sense of what people's gut reactions were to what would be happening soon. Because for me, as I deal with people and clients, I want to know what my people think, as I said earlier, because I need to know what the comfort levels on the other side of the phone are. Um, and so I asked a few questions. Um, 22 people responded, which I think is great for a quick, just, you know, grab of information, um, eight architecture firms, eight engineering firms, one was an AE firm, and five construction. So that's a, a good little mix. Um, my first question was, since the March 16th mandate, um, how is everybody working? What are y'all doing? Um, there was that equal split of um, people working 100% virtually and uh, people working kind of half and half with limited numbers in the office and some people working at home and kind of keeping the distance um, in case you're curious about what your peers are doing. Um, one respondent said they remained fully open. Um, three people said they kind of had a mix. Um, and then um, four respondents said, probably our construction folks, that they had field workers who were working, which is what I thought would happen, but that really their office professionals were um, doing at-home work. I have enough friends in the industry. That's kind of what I thought everyone would say. Um, but I just wanted to get sort of a numeric value. Um, client work. I asked about the continuation of client work. So 27% um, six respondents said that their work was long-term enough and that it didn't seem to be affected. Um, the beauty of long-term project design is that I was hoping that people weren't pulling the plug on things like other industries um, and that your firms were staying afloat because your clients aren't getting something in a day's turnaround anyway. 36% um, that said that there was some mix of some stalling and sustaining. Only one reported that there was a lessening. Um, one said there was actually a little bit of growth because of healthcare and nobody, thank goodness, said that work had stopped for their firm. So that, um, that makes me feel good that at least this industry um, has been able to sustain during this very weird, difficult time, at least um, as a generalization. The current areas of concern um, was just kind of where I feel like it's good to know where people's hearts are. This is not a data point. This is a heart point. Um, I did allow more than one um, multi-select, so that's why you see the numbers so large here. 
but definitely the top two understanding our economy we're all so worried about it um, in our state and of course the health of our people um, which makes total sense um, the next kind of highest ranking was keeping people employed which we know depends so much on our client work um, and keeping those projects active um, the two things that stood out to me because this is the world i work in is seeking new work in the new year end of this year new year and having a plan for the future which is why we're talking about it today. Um, and another really major one is how we're all going to manage working from home or how we have worked from home with kids and a child care uncertainty. And that's certainly a major, major question for people. It is a major question for me. Um, and I mean, I don't know how I haven't been interrupted yet. Um, but uh, how we deal with that as we all transition and how we have to be really gracious to people is is a huge huge thing that we've not really had to deal with before um financial loss and some technological challenges but it seems like people are doing pretty well with that um this is my favorite slide so i asked what is your gut reaction on when we may be reopening this is literally just tell me what your heart says um 13 percent said within two weeks, early May, but in gradual stages. Um, we know that staging is definitely recommended. So um, when I ask this question Monday, it's a little unclear how the staging would work. Um, so, you know, every day we get more info. Uh, the bulk of people said mid-May, but in gradual stages, which I think makes a lot of sense, especially because that's right around when school, the school ending. Um, is happening. And so for me, that seems like this sort of like curtain that we're almost like mentally have put in front of ourselves. 36% um, said early June, but in gradual stages, and only one person said sometime this fall, which I, that just made me happy because y'all, I just don't want to wait till fall. Um, I don't have the patience for that, even though I do want everyone uh, in our community to be healthy. I would love for our people to be back at work as well. Um, so I know there's a lot of mixed feelings in there and there's a lot of political stuff in there, but this is just kind of a quick snapshot of what people in your community are thinking, which I think is good to know. Um, I am done with my slides. I hope there were some ideas and helpfulness um, included. Here's my contact information. Um, please email me if you have any questions. Um, this link um has the two excel files that are just stuck in there um for you guys to go download if you want or you can email me and i'll send it back to you um and now i um am good with um q a so i'm gonna stop my screen share and um yeah i think we've got a question here from uh the nano office okay this is really cool how this q a portal works um what are some of the reopening ideas for bd for architects to do for clients um i mean i think it's sort of like the normal stuff but in a different pattern so um i had heard a few weeks ago that um this was like right at the beginning of social distancing instead of taking a group of people out to lunch they were sending lunch via waiter um, to another office and saying, hey, we bought everybody tacos or salads for the day. Um, jump on the call with us during lunchtime and we'll have a lunch meeting um, since you can't leave your office, um, which I thought was kind of, you know, cute. And it was something to offer, you know, to their clients. Um, short of doing the traditional calls and email outreach and trying to set up those future meetings, um, which I think makes sense and just understanding that there's a little bit of a filter on how those people will meet. So like if I was gonna meet with Nano and I needed to meet with you guys in the next two weeks, I might say, this is what we're working on. I really wanna to get together. Let's put something on the calendar for the second week of May. Um, I'll come to your office 
Or if that's not working at the time, we'll check in on Monday and do a Zoom call then. So at least it's being put on the calendar. Um, certainly if there's anything um, that's, that's gifting in a way, um, I mean, I know the people at Nano, so I know that there are some really talented individuals who paint and um, do really like beautiful side projects. Um, because I just happen to know those people. Um, you know, you could do something really nice, like get some, get something artistic that you could recreate and print in a small way. That's like just a gesture, like, um, you know, a thank you card to certain clients that you have that maybe, um, is, is a print from a hand painted something that one of your people did um, that just says, you know, we're using this time to flex our creativity, but we're thinking about you. Um, there's, there's just little things that you can do that touch people that are using some of those other skills that, that I know you guys have, um, that could be really appreciated. That's an idea. I hope that helps. Um, other BD things, you know, really just talking to people and showing them that you care um, is really important during this time. Um, another business contact of mine who works in um, construction equipment, so they do a lot of like forklift rental and things like that. They were calling their clients in the last week to say, what else does your facility need that is not in the purview of what we do? Um, and who can I, how can I help you connect to someone that might help you solve a problem? And so they were doing some really just helpful people connecting that had nothing to do with forklift rental. Um, but just to say, oh, you're having whatever, an electrical problem at your warehouse. Let me send you a name of someone who can help you solve that problem. Um, so there's some people connecting that's even really helpful that you could, guys could be doing, especially as you're going through the surveys, kind of where the pain points are. Are there any other questions? Um, no questions so far. Let's give folks another minute or two. And in the meantime, I will share some upcoming events here. Perfect. Oh. There's me again. Uh, um, yeah, so we are continuing our webinar series, Indoor HSW series, next week with a presentation from LEA on um, using light to disinfect. They're calling it Treat Your Building Like a Patient. That's going to be Tuesday, April 28th. And then Thursday, April 30th, we are going to have a presentation um, from another of our uh, professional affiliate members over at Letterman's Electronic Bidding and Public Bid Options in the COVID Era. Um, so this is something you know that's that's come up from our members trying to figure out how to bid, and uh, Letterman's has popped in to talk about that. And as always, we have our LinkedIn uh, members forum if folks want to, uh, to share or look at any information that others have been sharing. Uh, our website has um, a variety of updates and resources as well. And you can sign up for any events at our website, aaneworleans.org, or reach out to me or Lauren directly. Let's see, I don't think we've got any other questions in there? Um, so that might be it for us to, uh, for today. Rachel, thank you so much um, for sharing. This was a really great presentation. I think we've all got a lot to think about from it. Wonderful. Well, my email is really simple. It's just rachel at 3090marketing.com. So if you guys think of anything or uh, wanna have a discussion, don't hesitate to contact me. And thanks for inviting me to do this today. I appreciate it. Great, thank you so much. Um, have a good day, everyone. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon.